Hello and welcome back to Sew Crafty with Connie. Today I wanted to show y'all how to make these adorable adjustable little dog collars and they have the buckles on the end and then they've got a little d-ring for a leash and I wanted to show you how to make the matching leash as well. Very easy. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more sewing and quilting tutorials as well as recipes. So if y'all are ready to go get started, let's go. The first thing you want to do before you make these dog collars and leashes is to gather your materials that you're going to need. So I'm using this 100% cotton fabric and I have already cut out my measurements that I needed and I am sewing a small leash and I have cut it out two and a half inches wide by 19 inches long. And then you need to get a piece of either featherweight or lightweight interfacing that is going to be going onto the collar. It just makes it more sturdy. And then you need to get a buckle. It's these little buckles right here. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Joann's. Uh, I buy mine at Amazon because I sell these and you can get a whole bunch of them or a lot cheaper. You need to get the little sliders here and you need to get the size that's going to be the finish size for your collar. And the finish size for my collar is going to be a five to eight inch width. So I wanted to get a uh, slider that is going to match big enough to go in there. And then a D ring. This is a D ring and this is about an inch and all of this stuff can be bought on Amazon in, in bulk, but you can also get them at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, any kind of craft store. Now for the leash, you want to cut a 40 foot by width of the fabric, which is 44 inches long. And it's going to be, I cut it five inches wide. And then I got a swivel hook to put on the end so it can be hooked into the collar. Uh, and these swivel hooks you can also get at Hobby Lobby or Amazon. Now, if you want a longer leash, you could cut it, you know, for however long you want. But I have found the width of the fabric is long enough. Um, if you have a smaller dog, though, you may, and if you're pretty tall, you may want to cut it longer. But that's your preference. And I will have all of these descriptions and measurements down in the descriptions of my, uh, of my video. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the ironing board and we're gonna iron the interface onto the back, the wrong side of the collar piece. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now we're gonna take our collar and our interfacing and we're going to iron our interfacing onto the wrong side of the collar fabric. And this just makes it a little bit stronger Cut your interfacing the same size as your collar. If it's a little longer, that's okay. You can just cut that off later. And I have found the lighter weight, the feather weight is better as far as the interfacing, because if you get a heavier weight, it's gonna be too thick and you're not gonna be able to pull your collar through your slider. Okay. Now the leash doesn't need to have interfacing because you kind of want it to be a little flimsy. You don't want to be walking your dog and your your leash is so so uh, stiff that they have no leeway. <laughs> but um, anyway, so that's okay. You don't need to have any interfacing for your leash. Now you don't really need to use interfacing probably for your collar. I have just found that sometimes if I didn't use it, the collar would be too flimsy also, and it would not keep its shape 
and the size, like when you would put it through the D-ring, and I'll, I'll explain that to you too later on. So now we want to go ahead and prepare our collar to sew. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise, lengthwise and you're gonna have the right sides up. You're gonna iron that down. So now you're gonna be able to see your center crease. So now let's fold in each side so we don't have any raw edges and iron those down. Now we're gonna fold in each end and bring it over to the center crease where it meets the center crease that you just made when you ironed it at the very beginning lengthwise in half. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just bring it over to where it meets the center crease, the first one that you made when you first ironed it over. Now you want to fold the whole thing over and match up the edges and iron that down. And that will keep you from having raw edges. Now I would go ahead and pin it down so it will keep its shape while you while you're moving it around. Okay. Now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we are going to sew it closed and then finish the collar. Let's go ahead and do that now. I've got all the pieces here that I need to make the collar and then here's the collar right here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew, start from the folded edge at the end back stitch, go around, and then I'm gonna sew all the way down and then come up on the side here and back stitch up at the top. And this is gonna close it up. Now, I would make sure that I had a really good sharp needle ready to go. And if it gets to be a little bit tough to sew, just kinda of go slow. And if you decide you don't want interfacing in the collar, that will also help with the with the bulkiness, but I think with the interfacing, it does help it keep its shape. So I'm gonna sew, back stitch, go to the corner, and then I'm gonna turn, and I'm going to sew all the way down the side with a fourth inch seam allowance. Stop at the end, turn it, and then sew this side closed. And then I'm going to back stitch just to secure it. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut off my loose threads. Okay, and now we want to go ahead and put the collar together. All right, to do that, you want to put the D-ring on first. So you're going to slip the D-ring, slip the collar through the D-ring on one end and then bring it over and down on the other. Like this. Then you're going to bring it down about a half an inch and you're going to sew this down right here. Sew the edge down to the okay again cut your loose threads now we're going to put our buckle one end of the buckle on it doesn't matter which one which end you put on first. And you're gonna lay your collar down flat where the piece that you sewed over is facing down. 
And then you're gonna take your collar end and you're gonna go up from underneath the buckle and you're gonna pull it through. And then you're going to pull it through the first side of the slider and then you're gonna bring it back over the other side of your slider. Just pull it all the way down and then go ahead and pull it all the way towards the end like that. Okay, now we wanna finish, put the rest of it on. So you're going to put your V ring on first and then you're gonna put your other buckle on. Just slide that in through. And you're gonna fold this over. Now make sure that your D-ring, the curve is gonna be on the top of your collar. This is the collar, or this is the top of the collar where the D-ring is. So now you can bring it over probably about a couple of inches and you're gonna sew down this end, the very end first. would sew over the entire from one end to the other back stitch in a few times and then you're going to take your d-ring and push it down to where you just sewed it and then you're going to sew that side closed and you can sew right in between it And then you want to cut your, your loose threads. Make it a little, little neater. And that's it. And now you have your collar. And it's adjustable. And to adjust it, you just pull this end like that. So that'll make it smaller. And then you can make it bigger and then you just pull that in like that to make it bigger if you need it bigger okay so here's the collar now look at the loose threads okay now let's go ahead and finish our leash to make the leash, you're gonna lay it flat out on your ironing board like this, and then you're going to fold it in half lengthwise, just like you did the collar, and then you're going to iron it down like this, all the way. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and fold in your ends. Iron it down really good. And you're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Fold it in, iron it down. It's probably about a half an inch. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be too big. Now you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold the edge in the long edge in where it meets the middle crease and you're going to iron that and then you're going to do that all the way down do that all the way down and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side fold it over Iron that down. Okay. Now, after you get that done, you're going to fold over and meet up with the edges, the folded edges, and you're going to fold that down. You're going to iron that down. And then just make sure it matches up with the edge. Okay, 
Now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew it up. Okay, I've got my leash here. I'm about to sew it up and I got the little swivel hook to put on it. So we're going to do like we did the coll collars and just do one side, stop, and we're going to start back, st start stitch and then back stitch. And then we're going to go all the way down. And then I do about as well, close to the edge as you can get it. start going up this edge, then I back stitch there. Now we want to cut our loose threads. Okay, and now we're just going to attach the swivel hook. So all you have to do is just put one end into it, fold it over about an inch, and then just sew it closed. I'd top side back stitch quite a few times and make sure it goes all the way from one end to the other. Okay. And now I'm just cutting my loose threads again. And we want to make the handle. And I'm going to fold mine over about 13 inches. So I have a ruler here, so I'm just going to count. Let's see, that's six, that's 13. I'm just going to fold mine over about 13 inches. So it's like this. And then I'm going to come up about, uh, about an inch and a half. And then I'm going to sew like a square and then an X in the middle like this. I got my square and I back stitched where I started. Now I'm going to make my X. And then I'm going to make, let's do the other side. Making the X. And I'm going to cut my loose threads. It looks like this. Okay, here's a close up of it. See, you can see where the little X stitch is that I did. All right, and that's it. So you've got your leash, you've got your collar. Now, let's go test them out. So this is Hazel. As you can see, I'm trying out my leash and my collar on her and it seems to be working great. It's a good leash for me and it fits her pretty good. I made it small for her on her collar. So it seems to be working. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you have any questions, just please let me know. And I'd love to see your leashes and collars. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And now we're fixing to go for a walk. See y'all next time.